Welcome everyone to our final live session for DES 305 Web Portfolio Design. I am your instructor, Shannon McNamara, and I have only four slides today, so I won't be sharing my, my slideshow with you. They just basically say the agenda, the due dates, and that we're getting back into Muse. So I don't even think, I have an announcement that I, from yesterday, but let me, might as well take a look, right? Just in case. Can't remember if I posted anything between last night and tonight. And it looks as though I did not. Um, the live session, the slides are up there from last night. And I did want everyone to please make every effort to post your initial discussion um, question with your three pieces of artwork by tomorrow evening. So that way everybody gets a chance to be critiqued by their fellow classmates. So make sure that you are doing that. Today we're going to finish up this Muse um, recap, and it's our last live session. So sad tears, but you know maybe we'll see each other again. So again, our due dates, um, all assignments and assessments are due by Saturday at midnight, no exceptions. The course closes on its own. I have zero control over that. Um, your work cannot be turned in late. Please make sure that you are posting that original discussion post by Wednesday and responding to at least two of your fellow students by Saturday at midnight and posting on at least two different days. And um, late discussion posts will not be accepted past the Saturday deadline. So if you have any missing ones, those um, will not be graded. So if you do have missing work, please get your missing work in, but missing discussion um, posts won't be graded. All right, so let's get back into Muse. This is our, ah, I know we went over this, but I don't remember which live session it was in. Review, continued. So where we left off last night was I was going to finish up this about page, and then I was going to add in our breakpoints, make the site responsive, double check everything, and I believe that is, all I had left to do, which is still a whole lot of stuff. So let's open up that about document um, and look over what I have here. So it looks like I'm gonna have um, paragraph text up at the top. I'm probably going to do another panel. I've got some links that should open up in a different tab. I have a sidebar section and I'm going to add this link to the heading of that section. And I don't believe that I have any images per se. So I think I'll put a slideshow on this page for everyone. And I'm going to do one of those cool slideshows, that one that's that third-party widget. I just need the link, which I believe is located in the week four assignment. There we go, the Muse widget website. Which, oh, huh, it should already be in my Muse in my library panel. Correct, correct, yes, there it is. The one I was talking about was the blind um, image slideshow, which is right here, if you are looking for that. And that is this one. I think this is really cool. I think this always looks cool. All right, so I'm gonna draw my handy rectangle, which actually I don't need to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy again from um, my home page and keep the same setup because I for consistency throughout my site. So let me grab all of this. and paste in place. All 
I'm gonna dock that over there. All right. So let's see, I have Martha's Vineyard Attractions. And that will go down to here. So I'm going to fix, I'll fix that link after. But I think for this one, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to have the slideshow after the paragraph text. So I'm going to move my paragraph text up and move my slideshow down. I'm just going to leave that image right there for now, just for placement. And grab my paragraph text. And make sure it still has that paragraph style. And then I can delete that out and drag in my slideshow. And I gotta check how many images I have. I have the gingerbread house, the bike riding picture, should open up. Wasn't showing me a preview, so I definitely want to double check that there's not a problem with that image. Oh, and it looks as though there is. That's okay. I know where to find it. There we go. Place you. See if I have any other images. One more. And this one. All right, so we can do four, four images. In there. So you can see that that blind slideshow, the reason why I was, I was wondering is there's an option for two images, four images, and six images. You can, pr you might be able to, um, to change that. But like I said, some of these third party um, plugins or widgets really just, um, Muse is not letting you get in there and really change them. So let's do this. All right, so add file, I put them in. I put them in this folder, but they're not showing up where, oh, here we go. First one, second one, Am I in the right folder right now? No, I am not. I put them in the wrong folder, that makes sense. Unfortunately, when I teach this class a couple of times, I have the same looking folder, so it gets a little bit confusing. Let's do this, there we go. And place them again from here so I know. Bikes, there we go. Rid of that one, get rid of that one. We'll add them again from the correct folder. And the gingerbread house. All right, so I don't want this black background color because that really clashes with my color scheme. I think I'm going to do none. 
which looks like white. It does not look like none. So I'm going to do this pale blue, which is the same color blue that I have kind of as an overlay. Hmm. Zoom in a little. And I can, you know what I can do? I can open up that background. This is the wrong folder. There we go. Can open up that background and double check what that color is. So three, zero, one, or F, D, F, I'll copy the hex code. There we go. Now, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's a little bit less noticeable that it's not the same um, background color. And then we have number of blinds, and then we have blind gap and image duration. So 3,000 is about three, I believe it's like three seconds. Like there's a weird calculation for math um, when it comes to seconds in code. Um, we'll have to check that. The blind gap, you, wanna, you need to use even numbers um, or there will be a rip, they say. And then the number of blinds, you can go up. need to um. That's cool. I'll leave it like that. No. Nope, I said three. There we go. And go back in, grab out the rest of it. So I've got beaches, lighthouses, and gingerbread cottages. So I'm just going to put the information into the tabs first. Beaches, lighthouses, and get rid of the colons though. And gingerbread cottages. All right, so first one, beaches. Grab the text. And, you know, I should probably grab the whole thing. Change it all to body copy first, a paragraph copy. Come on. There we go. I had a click here. So let's take a look at the hyperlink. All right, there we go. Let's add a hyperlink. Open it in a new tab. Hi, Jenny. I was glad, glad you could make it. I'm sorry. I had that other lecture it just ended, and I might have to even leave a little early to take my girls to volleyball. But <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. I'm glad you were able to make it. I'm just kind of over here, just making a site, and um, that's what we're doing this week. I just started a site from the beginning, and tonight I'm finishing it up and adding in the. Um, I'm going to be adding in the breakpoints and doing all that. Okay. 
So if you have any questions, um, definitely let me know, or you can just kind of watch along. <laughs> Okay, and it's the same breakpoints that we did last time, correct? Those same. Well, uh, they'll be different because it's a different site than I did last time. But yes, as in 768 and 360, yes. Right. That is okay. okay. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right, so I got my link in there. This is going to be an H2 headline. And I'm going to swap out my image because I want a beach image. So replace image with, probably do the beach map right there. I'm going to crop it just to kind of, because it doesn't fit that original bounding box. Hit enter and then I can resize this, make it a little bit bigger. And I might make this image a clickable link as well to the same um, link that says click here. And remember to open it up in a new tab so it opens up outside of my site. Close that up a little. I was saying, I think I lost my rectangle. Nope, it's right there. All right, so the next one. I have lighthouses, um, and I'm referencing a lighthouse here, so I might as well get a, myself a picture of it put there. Um, make sure it's labeled for reuse. Um, black and white one's kind of cool. All right, I'll save this one. And back into Muse, back into Lighthouses. Actually, I'll copy from Beaches. I'm going to copy this entire portion, go into Lighthouses. Oops. Delete this, and paste that in, and figure out what the Y coordinate was and the X coordinate was 125, 1236. 125, 1236, now that's even. And click, 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 click. Replace image, East Chop image. Again, I'm gonna crop it just to close it up. Close up the bounding box. Yeah, I'll make that a little bit bigger. Open it up. And we've got lighthouses. Oh, it didn't. Never mind. All right. That's how it wants to play it. Let's do this. And I had a link in here to the Martha's Vineyard Museum. So at the Martha's Vineyard Museum. Open that in a new tab. Change my web font for the link to semi bold. I think that's what I had done. If not, that's what I meant to do. Yep, there we go. And I'm actually going to crop this a little bit. All 
All right, next we have gingerbread cottages. Oh, let me copy this, go over to gingerbread cottages. Paste in place. Place that image. With, there it is. Um, nope. Oh, I forget what the edit object fitting. There we go. Nope, wrong one. All right, and then we'll crop it. So it doesn't treat the bounding boxes, as you can see, for the images quite the same as InDesign does. So you gotta kind of finagle it a little bit. And grab that copy. And the link. Or not. All right. Open that in a new tab and change that to semi gold. That is done. I'm going to open this up just as high as. Sorry, right. and we have our sidebar section and I had a link I was gonna put into my sidebar headline. So let me copy that. Headline, let's center it. And Copy this. Again, I always like to write out all of my copy in Word and have everything ready to go. So when I get into Muse, I'm just copying and pasting. I make myself little notes like, you know, add this link to the headline. It, it, it just keeps me so much better organized. And extend that down. Oh, come on. All right. So let's save this and preview my pages. Oh, I never fixed my anchor. So let's rename, right click, rename this anchor from fairy to um, we'll call it beaches. And let's add that link in here. So we're going to hyperlink this down to the beaches anchor. Save our page. And let's preview this site in the browser.
All right, so I got my homepage and I have my anchor link that brings me down here. These should open in a new tab. That does. I can tell this is there. This is a link. I've got my navigation down here. I've got my scrolling up. It's good. Go to my dining page. This is a little bit weird, but for some reason, this is how Muse seems to treat this rollover. I don't know why. Um, got this, which opens up the menu in a PDF in a new tab. Um, this should open up in a new tab. There we go. Tell that these are links. Normally, if I was building this as an extra actual site, um, and I'm not going to do this because you guys are watching, but I would make each of these a hyperlink to those um, to those restaurants' web pages if they had a web page. Um, you know, just for it's just good for you know kind of linking things back. It's good for your SEO to have stuff like that. Um, my about page which is the one I just made, has my slideshow that opens up. Just double check that. Looks good. Got my hyperlink bring, that brings me down to my beaches tab, lighthouses, gingerbread cottages. I can double check that these are links. This one is a different color. Oh, because I've already... Because I've already checked it. Let me double check that. Yes, okay. And that is a link, but it is not rolling over. And it should. That should roll over. So I need to double check that in Muse and see why that is not happening. And it shows that it should be doing that. So there's a chance because I'm just previewing this in the browser that something got a little wonky with the code because it definitely um, should show as a link with a rollover. So I'm going to guess it's probably something to do with that. And then I have my contact page. This will open up my mail. Um, I have my form here, a submit button, and then I have a very small privacy policy saying that I will not sell your um, email address if you send me an email through my form. And my logo brings me back to my homepage where we could start it all over again. You can see I'm, it's definitely having some issues. I hope it's not. We have some really bad wing going on outside, so I'm hoping it's not me. <laughs> All right. So let's start with those breakpoints. So we're going to start again on um, the master page first, figure out, you know, everything with the master page and um, get that all set before we move on to the other pages. So I need to make a breakpoint at 768 and make a breakpoint at 360. So I'm gonna close up my scrubber till I get close enough to 768. And got it right on the money. 360 is always a pain, which I'm sure you guys have noticed when you are, we're trying to make yours, it's tough to get at 360. So let's close this up till we get to 360. And wow, perfect. that was perfect. <laughs> this is just from, uh, one thing that I've noticed, and it has to be because it's so close to the minimum page width of 320, unless if they fixed it in this version. But I've noticed that if I'm a bit off um, on the 360, like, um, like let me delete that breakpoint, and I get close, like let's say I get to like 368 or something, and I double click to change it to 360 in here, like I can do for 760, it won't, see? 
it's like I don't know why, and it's it's so bizarre. But um, now I'm gonna command Z myself back to having a 360 because such pain. So um, yeah, it 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 has to be it has to have something to do with you know the coding you use, honestly, because I can't think of any other reason why. Because you can fix every other breakpoint. Um, and you know, type in the correct number that you need. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit annoying to say the least. All right. So as I was saying yesterday during our live session, um, our I have an iPhone six, not a success, just a regular six, and I have found that my break point for that cell phone is probably like right around here. So you can imagine lots of people have iPhones, lots of people have Samsung phones. 360 is really tiny. I'm trying to think of what, like maybe the old iPhone 3 or the old iPhone 4 may have had a screen size of 360. So think of how many people are still, I mean, my aunt still has an iPhone 4 that we gave her uh, that she will never get rid of. But, um, you know, not many people are walking around with cell phones that are that small. I mean, there are definitely people who do still have cell phones that are that small, but which is why we need to make that break point and make sure that our site can be viewed on everybody's screen. But my point is, is that you really need to pay attention to what is happening between these breakpoint numbers. And you have to deal with that part of the design the same exact way that you would the design within the breakpoint. So you need to close those scrubbers. And if things get out of hand, you need to adjust certain things. Um, like, I don't feel that my navigation or, or that my logo really needs to resize. I think I can make it to the 768 without it resizing. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to pin it to the center because it's currently in the center of my page. And what I want is when my page starts to resize, it's going to size in from the left side and it's going to size in from the right side. And I want I want that to always stay pinned to the center no matter where the browser window is. So let me see what happens when I start to close that up. And I can definitely make it to 768. And I'm also going to hide this menu in other breakpoints because I want to use my um, mobile menu in the 768 and the 360 breakpoint. I'm also going to drop a line and resize that logo back in seven, the 768 breakpoint to the original size and see, and, and at least start it from there. This navigation, I'm gonna tell it to stretch to the browser width, I think that'll, work and I can make it all the way to 768 without it getting weird and then at 768 it disappears but that's fine and I'm also going to pin this eh, I guess I don't really need to pin it to the center because it's not giving me that option I don't want to pin it down to the center because it's going to move down it, it, it might move down through the page it might do something kind of weird I don't want to pin it up and have it move up the, the page as it resizes so again I have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, my social media icons down here, I'm going to group these together and I'm going to pin them to the left because I want them to stick to the left hand side of my footer. And I'm going to tell them to res have responsive width and height. My navigation down here, I want it to have responsive width. And I possibly want to pin this to the right. We'll double check that. And then the scroll to the top isn't going to really resize. I'm just going to pin this to the right too. We'll see what happens. So I need to make sure that my navigation doesn't start to run into my social media icons. But this one is starting to run off the, it's starting to run away. So I got to, worry about that. I don't know why. 
my Twitter icon is starting to run away. Let me ungroup that. And it looks as though the bounding box for this one is way bigger. So I'm going to crop that bounding box to be the same size as the other ones. And that should do it. So even little things, because remember, it's resizing based on the bounding box, okay. um, not based on the content within the bounding box. So whenever it hits that bounding box, it's going to start to resize. And that's why your text boxes might get a little bit weird and they'll start to resize even though it hasn't hit where the text inside of the text box is. It's kind of a, a weird quirk, I guess, with um, Muse and with breakpoints and things of that nature. So let's try this again. And I grouped it again and I pinned it to the left. So now it's at least starting to move together, but that's getting really close. So what I might need to do is actually move these social media icons closer together right from the start. That over to there. Group them again, and this is what I mean. It's trial and error, pin them to the left again. Let's try it again. So I gotta make it to the 768 breakpoint without this all falling apart. And there we are. I might also try to pin them to the bottom left. Let's see if that kind of keeps them from floating up here. Eh, not really, they still get a little weird. So we'll just go with just the left. And I have that pinned to the right. So again, trial and error, just trying to figure it out. All right, I'm gonna go over to my 768 breakpoint and I'm going to resize my logo back to where it was. And make sure it's centered on my page. And I'm gonna drag in that mobile widget, mobile drop down. And right from the beginning this time, I am going to make a new layer and I am going to name it mobile nav. I'm going to take it off of layer one. Lock that layer. And paste in place. No, I'm not. Definitely trying to put it right here. We got next. Lock that layer. Oh my gosh, come on. All right, there we go. And this is running a little bit outside of my header, so I'm going to open up my header. And I want to change that font to Source Sans Pro Black, do all caps. And I'm just gonna have it say menu. I don't need it to say ugh. mobile menu. Really? I just updated to 2018, so there is a good chance that I lost even more editing capability um, in these third-party widgets. So this could be my computer right now, or it could be because I, I upgraded and now um, I'm running 2018. So if you run into that, you know, I just have a feeling that Adobe's like, nope, we are not allowing third-party widgets. We want you to use our widgets or pay for our widgets, which sounds about right, too. All right. 
we see. There we go. Overlap items below. See if I can change this color. All right. Well, that's that's one thing. All right. So normal rollover is going to be pink. Um, mouse down. I'm going to do teal. I guess. No, I'm going to do mouse down. Do brown. And active, I'm going to do teal. Teal and black, there we go. <laughs> I'm like bound and determined that this will work. All right. And this is set to stretch to browser width, which should be fine, but I wanted to pin Hmm, it's telling me it's pinning it to the left. Definitely don't want it pinned to the left. Oh, there we go. All right, change it to responsive with, pin it to the right. Hmm, let's take a look at that. Just happened here. There we go. And oh, layers. All right. So this this logo. Want it pinned to the center? Oh, I just wish that it would go a little bit further before it got small. Oh, whoops. Right click. Come on. There we go. No, hide and break point. All right. Hmm. So I'm trying to decide here if when I get to this breakpoint, if I want to manually, let's see how small it gets. Let's see if it gets to less than right here right here all right so let's see if it gets to smaller than my 360 breakpoint towards the end yeah it gets pretty small so what I think I might do is when I get to this breakpoint I think I might resize this to my 360 breakpoint and then tell my logo not to resize and move my mobile menu up and move my header up a little. Whew. All right. And then Drop another guide at, look, oh, come on. Another guide right here. Then I can see where I want to resize that 360 logo to. Maybe right here, give it a little bit of space and move this up. All right, so let's check this out. Let's 
So my header so far seems to be resizing okay. And this time we're really gonna get much smaller than that. Although at this 360, I am still going to tell this to do responsive and I'm gonna pin it to the right and pin my logo to the center, even though it's probably not going to resize any smaller than that, you know, just in case. All right, so my footer was pretty much okay until we get to 768 and then it started to get a little bit weird again. So at 768, I'm going to start to move some things around and I'm on the fence about keeping that scroll to the top in this breakpoint, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Going to just move it over for a second. Move my social media icons. I'm gonna run my navigation clear across and I'm going to set it to stretch to browser width. Move it down a little. And center these. I'm going to ungroup this. Ungroup. And this one I got to deal with again, cropping it down. So that's like a good thing to do, probably right in the beginning when you first add it to the. Um, what is a good thing? Um, as far as like. Um, making the bounding boxes smaller for those icons. Yeah, it definitely, yeah, it definitely um, helps. I did it on the other one and I didn't really notice when I placed Twitter, the Twitter logo that it had done that. And now that I'm dealing with it, I'm like, oh, I wish I caught that from the beginning. But it seems like it keeps almost resizing the bounding box. It's not really keeping it. So, you know. I'm having that same problem with my that Facebook um, widget thing that I added the Facebook yes um, so I, I was wondering when I went to the browser to look at it my Facebook is like flying up in the air I'm like what are you doing yeah exactly right you're like can you please talk this off <laughs> behave <laughs> exactly <laughs> it makes sense with the bird I mean it's yeah it's that, yeah if the bird flies away you're like well oh they must have meant to do that and I'm like yeah yeah totally 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 meant to do that <laughs> oh yeah it's sometimes it's a good time because you're like I don't even know why this is doing this like sometimes it, it still happens to me all the time and I'm like why are you doing this and then I'll finally figure it out and I'm like okay I guess you know <laughs> Oh, good time. All right, so these social media ones, I'm kind of going to stack things. So I'm going to um, set these to pin to the center. And I don't want them to resize because, honestly, they're going to get so small at this point um, if they resize that you won't be able to, to tap them with your finger. And the menu is just stretching to the width. So, And for right now, I'll just move that scroll to the top thing back over. And I'll just keep it pinned to the right. So I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to double check that in the browser because I can't actually see what's happening with this thing clearly. So let's check this. And what I need to make sure of is that my navigation at the bottom is going to make it to 360 before it starts to run outside of the text boxes. So that's going to get really close. Oh, and it just made it. All right. Whew. Let's open that back up. Oh, what is going on with this thing? All right, save this. And going to again drop a line and drop a line. Go to 360, because I know I'm going to have to, yep, move these guys over. Move you out of the way for now. I'm going to center this menu. And I'm just going to bring the font down to 16 right here, because it's getting a little bit big. And easier if I just zoom in. Come on. 
ungroup you. So let's do this one at a time. You last because you're a pain in my butt tonight. <laughs> Crop you one more time. I think sometimes I have to turn off the guides so I can of the frame edges so I can see that looks right. Yeah, it does look right. <laughs> I'm like, it says it's correct, but sometimes I need to have like, you know, it might be correct, um, you know, pixel wise, but sometimes if it doesn't look correct, you just want to adjust it um, to make sure it actually, you know, looks right. Otherwise there's really no point. So I'm going to group you, center you, there we go, move you down a smidge. You are going to be set to restretch the browser with. You are going to be set to none and pinned to the center. You are also, you don't need to be pinned to the center. You're good. 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 All right. So let's, and you can come back over here, I guess. And let's try this again. What is going? What happened right there? I don't know. Right, because it was fine. It looked fine. It did not look like that. Yeah, it didn't look like that when I did it. The oh, come on. All right. Um. None. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. That was fun for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I don't have them exactly the same in 360. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not losing my mind. Yeah, okay. They're not over overlapping now, at least. But... All right. Like, what? No. <laughs> don't start with me. All right. So, the only way, all right, this will probably be the easiest thing. I'm, I'm going to just preview this page, which is only the master page and has nothing in it in the browser. It's going to be a little bit weird, but I need to double check this scroll to top thing because I can only see the option. <laughs> I'm wondering if it even shows up. It doesn't because there's nothing to scroll down. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on, everyone. Hold your hats. Go into the home page. And this is gonna not really be correct because I haven't fixed it, but let's preview this page in the browser. <laughs> and it's gonna, the whole body area will be a mess, but at least I can double check this thing. So let's. Well, there it is. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if it behaves. Oh, it goes away right there. Eh, all right, well, I can watch, I guess, down here and see if it runs into the footer, which is pretty much what I was worried about. It's going to a little bit, it looks like. I'm not trying to hide. <laughs> all right, so these get there. That's because I haven't fixed any of this, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a mess and it keeps messing up. It's running into everything at this point. So there is a small time in the 768 I can see where it starts to run into my footer. So what I should do is in that breakpoint, move it up a bit. It's still a footer item, but maybe that will do it. Let's go Let's see.
you may be wondering why I'm doing preview page as opposed to like preview site. It just loads a little bit quick, quicker. I can't get to any of the other pages, but I'm really just trying to check out what's going on with my footer. So. There's almost All right, where's my breakpoint? Oh, when it goes to the center. All right, so actually I didn't have to fix it in my 768. I need to fix it in my 1200 breakpoint. Wait, and haven't you, how did you realize that? Um, because I re I centered the logos at my 768 breakpoint and it's moved oh. up there. So it's actually in the 1200 breakpoint towards the end that's running into my navigation. So in my 1200 breakpoint, I'm gonna select it and move it up a bit. Hopefully that'll do it. I'm gonna see where, all right, so I have it set at 359, let's see. I have a set 360 there. All right, and 400 here, which makes no sense, but 400 is probably fine right here. No, it's probably not. Let's try 360. Let's just be consistent across the site. I was close though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and let's try that again. Home page, preview page and browser. So this just kind of goes to show you, like, no matter how many times that you've built a site, yeah, it, it's all, every single time you do a new site, you know, what worked last time is not necessarily going to work this time. All right. And that keeps it above the word contact all the way through. And clearly we need to fix that. I mean, I think it looks great just like that. Just kidding. <laughs> No, we should just we should just make that 360 and, and smaller. Just say you need a new phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It loads. You, you need a new phone. I couldn't even. I was I was um, building a site. I was saying this yesterday. I was building a site yesterday. Um, or not yesterday. Yeah, I was building this site yesterday. I was building a site this weekend, and I was um, double checking it. You know, on my cell phone as I was hitting the different breakpoints to make sure that they were working. And I'm like, all right, so this is definitely, you know, like the 360 breakpoint. And then I scrolled down, I was like, wait a minute. No, it's not. This is not the 360 breakpoint because, um, you know, like my footer is still set up like it is in the 768 breakpoint, not how I've changed it. So I was like, wait a minute, that's kind of interesting. Let me see where the break point is, and I kind of kept my phone open while I closed my scrubber bar, and that's how I figured out that it was like somewhere in between 768 and 360, like around the 500 and something mark that my iPhone's at. So I was like, oh, that's interesting to know. You know, a lot of people, you know, use iPhones and use the Samsung phones, and they're probably located somewhere in between there too. So I was like, I really, need to pay attention to what's going on between that 768 and that 360 um, breakpoint because I'm going to guess that 90% of the people who are looking at my website are going to be looking at my website on their cell phone, yeah. you know, because how often do we get on our computers these days or on their tablet? So, you know, I was like, all right, I really need to pay attention to what's going on and make sure everything, sometimes like, you know, in between here, I'll let, I'll be like, uh, it almost made it, you know, but you really want to make sure, especially for something on a cell phone, because if it doesn't work, they're going to be like, oh, this, you know, you're on your phone. You're going to be like, oh, this is garbage and just move on. You right. know, I mean, seriously, think of how many times we do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I was like, oh, all right, pay attention. <laughs> surprises me i don't know why i was thinking like the 360 would be like cell phones you know what? and i did too like it just was like okay because well because we call it that we're like this is the mobile and this is the tablet and you know probably five five years ago this was the mobile screen size but it actually goes off of you know pixels so that's 360 pixels and our cell phones have 
higher pixel quality now. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's so it's like it's all like a math equation at the end of the day. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, that makes sense now. Like, that's why that is doing that. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, I, I did the same thing. Cause I'm like, this is my mobile. This is my iPad. And then the funny thing is, is it's not even my iPad. Cause I have an iPad mini. <laughs> so my iPad mini is probably like around like, you know, 540 or something. It's like the, my iPad mini is like the size of my husband's cell phone. Cause he's got like a Samsung, like a big Samsung. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have Samsungs too. Oh, sorry. I'll That's okay. So, all right, so I'm going to deal with this first break point. So sometimes before I start to even pin things and I start to resize things, I like to, especially once my whole page is in here and everything's in here, I like to close my scrubber and actually just keep an eye on what is actually happening you know, before I decide, like, pin this to the center, pin this to the center, this needs to be resized, this needs to be resized, this needs to be pinned to the right, because I want it to stay on the right-hand side, this needs to be pinned to the left, because I want it to stay on the left-hand side. I like to see what's going on, because if there's a chance that resizing my tabbed panel by just a couple of pixels means that I don't have to set it to resize, you know, if I manually resize it, you know, that's going to save me a lot of time and it's going to save me a lot of aggravation. So I kind of want to just keep an eye and see. Like the same thing with um, like my dining page. You know, I automatically went to two, um, two lines of text, but you can see, whoops, create new breakpoint. Great new breakpoint. You can see at the 768 breakpoint that if I just move the word on, I might be able to get this. Eh, maybe not. I was gonna say I might be able to get it to stay on two lines. Or if I extend. Hmm. It might also be worth me going down like a half of a 50, going down to like 55 point and Fudging that possibly. Or, you know, there we go. All right, to just try to make it, you know, try to make it to that break point. See what I mean? So that's why I always use that scrubber first, so that way I can just kind of see what's going on here. I knew that was going to happen on that page. All right, so let's take a, I'm, I'm really trying to pay attention down here. And you can't click in here because it's going to jump you to the breakpoint. But if you just lay off the scrubber, it will resize everything and redraw everything so you can kind of see what's happening right there. So I like to do that a couple of times. So I'm not quite sure if everything is going to make it without me moving some of this text to a third line or possibly extending the side, the width of my um, panel. So that's getting super close right there and running into it, each other. All right. So I think I can fix this. By extending the width of this panel, I'm going to make it 650. And then we'll try that again. And I'll, I'll extend the panels on all three pages because I want the layout to look consistent across the three pages. So let's see what happens. See if I make it. And this is also kind of where, like, all good intentions for, you know, design right at the beginning, you're like, eh, all right, I'm going to have to, no, I'm still going to have to possibly move ferry to a second line. I'm going to just close up the tracking. Ooh. Ooh. That's a lot.
hate to go to a third line, but uh, well, let's see. Let's try it again. Will she make it? Eh, I might. That got weird. <laughs> I know how to fix it, but still, it always it always cracks me up when it's like, and here, <laughs> just gonna move this all the way down here for no reason. This is where grouping things when you go to pin things really helps. Um, you know, these both need to be pinned to the center, but I also want them to stay together. So I'm going to group them and that will keep them together as my page resizes. So sometimes you have to pin something first and then group it. Um, but that really does, you know, it really does help. Let me open this up a little because that looks a little weird. And this one. Consistency, consistency. Go. And I might as well put this on a second line. Whoops. So that way there's at least, you know, some consistency there. <sighs> it definitely needs to resize. Just, uh. all right, I'm going to, all right, to fix this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my text and my image together, and I'm going to pin those to the center, and then I'm going to group them. So that will take care of this. I'm going to pin this headline to the center, and I'm going to tell it not to resize because I'm pretty sure I can get to 768 and I can without that text getting smaller. So let's see what happens when I pin those together. That keeps them together, but I still need to move it up for some reason at the 768 breakpoint. I don't know why it does that. It might, let's see, hold on. Cancel. I'm gonna delete the, these bird points for a second. And I'm going to see if when I add them back in after it's been grouped, if it remembers that they're grouped. Oh, and it does. All right. Huh. Look at me solving some problems on the fly. All right. So apparently, if I have something grouped, before I make my breakpoint, it remembers that it's grouped in the breakpoint. If I make the breakpoint first, and then I group something, when it hits that breakpoint, it doesn't remember it. So if you're having the same problem as me, just delete your breakpoints, group your items, and then make the breakpoints again. That seems to kind of take care of that problem, which is good because that was kind of annoying. And then in this breakpoint, I'm gonna resize this. There we go. So that takes care of the whole top area. And I'm still not 100% happy with this. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pin this to the right and then pin this to the right, pin this to the left, and then we'll go from there. See how this goes. And that, for some, that was weird. Why, why'd you do that? Pin to the left, pin to the right. All right, let me group these two together. Try that again. Nope. 
Remove this pin. One of them's. Okay, it's this one. This is moving to the right, even though it's pinned to the left, because that makes sense. <laughs> and if it's not pinned, it stays where it needs to be. That's fun. That defies logic right there. Just figure it out as you go. Yeah, you got to. I, this is what I mean, because it's, it's every time you build a site, something, it, it works differently. So... I don't trust that these don't need to be pinned. I'm not gonna lie, I don't, I don't trust them. They're not trustworthy. So I'm gonna group these two things together and I'm gonna pin it to the center and I wanna see what happens when I do that. And then they get really weird and run off. That makes no sense. All right, hold on. They did the opposite of what you Yeah, they liter they're literally doing the opposite of what I am telling them to do right now. All right, unpin this. Is it because they're grouped or is it because they're pinned? It's because they're pinned. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you guys definitely want to hear that. That doesn't make any sense. That I don't trust it. Hold on. I'm going to save this. I'm going to preview in the browser because I have a feeling that something is going to be work completely differently when I look at it in the browser. Because sometimes you just can't trust the scrubber in Muse. It's untrustworthy. All right, let's close. Let's go down here, start to close this bad boy up. Hmm. They are staying together. They are behaving. Well, well, I'll be. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go down to one, um, to one column in 768, but maybe, I don't know. All right. Huh. It won't work tomorrow, though. <laughs> it won't work tomorrow. Exactly. Like, uh, uh, exactly. I'll come in here and it'll be like, nope. Sorry. So for this breakpoint, I'm going to move this down here. And I'm going to extend this right across. So, close that up. Oops. There we go, and I'll run that across as well. Yeah, I'll group this. All right, so this will now be pinned to the center. Let's see if it, you know what? I'm not gonna pin it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it does the same thing in this breakpoint and group these back together. All right, let's see what happens between 768 and 360. That's still seeing where it needs to stay. Ooh, that gets a little weird. I don't know if that's gonna make it to, the, yeah. I think we might need to. I hate to go below 16 point, but I don't know if this is going to make it. Let me zoom in. It's like I've got three long words right in the middle. Yeah, that's not going to do. That shall not do. So, I feel like if I change it here, it's going to change it in all of my breakpoints, though. And it does. Close 
can zoom up a little. There's only so much sometimes that you can do with these tabs because they're they're widgets, so you're kind of at the mercy of the coding that's in them. Mm. Will it make it? Yes and no. I feel like it's not resizing the height though of the text and the text is running out. That's weird. All right, let's do this. I wonder if it will let me. Oh, it does. Nope. Try not. I have to open up these text boxes because it doesn't. It's not resizing height and width, it's only resizing width, and then it's letting the text run outside of the text box, which is poor coding on Adobe's end, honestly. Oh, I just saw the chat, sorry. Um, okay, as far as making the tabs on the bottom, not on the top, what I have found, and this is like so ridiculous to do, Technically, technically it can get done. So the question in the chat is, can you make the tabs be at the bottom, not at the top? And I'm going to like, it's so crazy what this is. Let me copy this and um, go over to my thank you page. It's the only page that doesn't have something on it right now and just paste it in. All right, so let's say you wanna do that. What you have to do is you have to take this whole thing you have to rotate it 180 degrees. Like I've done this before. And then you have to go in and select the text boxes. And I, there used to be a way, and I don't even know if it lets you do that, to swap them upside and make them upside down. Oh, they took away that option because that's what you used to have to do. Was rotate, hold on, the whole thing. So maybe now you can't because they realized that that was really ridiculous. Um, uh, maybe it was the other one. Hold on. Oh, it was the accordion. I think that lets you do it. You can rotate it 90 degrees. Oops. Maybe. Negative 90, come on. There we go. And then put the rotate the text inside. Oh, see, no, it's not letting you. It used to let you rotate each thing separately. So they, got, they seem to have gotten rid of that option. But it would be nice if you could have a tab panel with the tabs on the bottom. You know, let's let's see if somebody's come up with that. Um, use tab panel tabs on bottom. This question though is from 2013. Oh, and it's not answered. Um, Yeah, so a lot of people had the same question, but it, apparently Adobe never addressed it. Um, uh, 
But I bet you it's, a, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, Adobe. <laughs> um, oh, and somebody else apparently was trying to do the thing I did, because I swear they used to. Um, it's easy enough to rotate a tab panel, but you cannot change the orientation of the text on each tab once the widget has been rotated. And then three other people had the same question. And they used to let you. I swear they used to let you. It might have been like three versions ago, though. So, yeah. Good times. Good times. All right, so let me delete that. Honestly, like, I've tried, like, I found a couple of weird workarounds on things, but then some things you just, for some reason, can't figure, you know, can't find a workaround to. And it's like, oh, it's so annoying. Um, like, why on earth would I want to rotate, you know, the panel and not, rotate the content within it. You know what I mean? It's like, come on now. Oh. All right. So let's see if this fixes, which one has the most text? Probably this one is going to run outside of the text box first. So let's see what, let's see what happens. All right, I think that's all of it. Okay, because it, it, the, the sentence does trail off. All right, so I think that got it. Which then brings us to our 360 tab, which we're going to clearly need to change. Oh, I forgot to watch what was going on here. This is resizing to the browser width. All right. And here, resize this one to the browser width. Getting a little long. This over. Now, for this one, I'm going to just extend it the entire width. Stretch to browser width. And move all the content. It gets so redundant doing this, but you have to do it each time. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And close up the content area because I don't think anything's going to go much smaller than 360. And I need to come on, make this image bigger clearly because you can't even see it. I think what I'm going to do, open this up to here, bring this down, and make this bigger. Otherwise, what's the point of having that image in there if you can't even see it? And move my fairy tip tricks. 
I'm not going to extend them all the way. You can give it a little bit of space. And clearly this can be smaller. And move this up a little. All right, so let's check this out. Oh, you know what? Why don't I, in this one, I maybe I'll do the same thing. Resize this tab panel to the browser width, and maybe that'll give me enough room to get to 360. I need to fix that image though. I need to do the same thing with the image in this one that I did in the other one. Let me see, where do I have the text going to? Should go to here. Here, every time I fix something, I'll go in and fix inside the panels. Don't forget to neglect the inside of your panels. Um, Oops. All right, so let's see, let's see how that does. That looks good. Wait, did my... Oh, and this isn't resizing itself. Oh, come on. Come on now. Did I not group them? Let's try to group these. Group. They are grouped. Resize. Responsive width and height. You're not... You're not sticking together. Responsive width and height. Responsive width. Group. Pin to the center. Let's see. Hmm. That rectangle is not resizing, but it had no problems over here resizing. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe. This needs to be none. We'll see. Nope, that's not it. Ungroup. Set you to none. Set you to responsive width. It's a little bit weird, but that might take care of my problem. No, it's still running off. All right, widen it just a bit. You just a bit. Ugh. 
All right, no. And center. Hmm. This is where um, having like these color blocks, sometimes it's a pain because you can't code them the way you can code other things. So you end up having to like, kind of like really finagle it in a way. Um, let's try it again. Like once it goes down to here, it's not. Let's try just responsive width again. All right, that's not the greatest. It doesn't look the greatest right here, but at least it's not running off. All right, so let's test this page. Let's save everything we did. Test this page in the browser. Definitely gonna pay attention to what's going on right here. I think I just lucked out that this made it to the break point without breaking, in all honesty. I don't think it was actually that it was resizing, I just kind of lucked out. Oh, this is behind here. All right, I gotta fix that. Another thing that I can do is I can just kind of break, which I might do because I don't like how that looks, is I can break the design in that break point, but let me fix the scroll to top, I'm going to go back into my master. And I'm actually gonna put the scroll to top on the same layer as my mobile nav. I hate that it won't do a paste in place. I don't remember, I, oh, it was 360 I said, 360. All right, so that should take care of that. That should now be, a, a, will run above everything else. Oops. All right, so back to my homepage conundrum. So, in this breakpoint, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to hide this entire section in the breakpoint, and then paste the text box in, and 
hide that this text box and my other breakpoints and just change the text color to my darker blue. And that'll take care of that. Then I just need to resize this text box. I don't have to deal with that blue background. Keeps it a little bit cleaner. And then when I get to 360, it can come back. I'm also going to delete this. So I have a text box here. That'll keep it from running right up. There we go. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted it though. Cause that'll delete it all over my site. I'm just gonna hide it in this breakpoint. There we go. Whew. So, all right. So I think that that'll help the situation. So let's save this. And preview this page again. Close out my 75 other versions of it that I seem to have open. All these tabs. So now this is above everything. Why is it? I gotta double check that. All right, yep. All right, it is above everything. My mobile menu is above everything. That's a little weird. I don't know why it's doing that. That's bizarre. Island Ferry, when I hit the break point, it goes to Highline Cruises. Oh, I know. It's just showing whatever is showing up in each break point. All right. It's not actually reading the code. Move this out of the way for a second. Oh, it won't let me. That's right. It's set to whatever. All right. I think that's fine. So none of the previews are really perfect, which is kind of a bummer. Um, you know, so another way, if you're finding that you're having some glitches with the actual previews, what I would say is, you know what, P publish it early and you can, um, you can kind of check the published site version. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to name this Martha's Vineyard 350. I'm getting the list of data centers could not be obtained. That's weird. Wonder if there's something going on. Oh, it's doing that thing again where it's not going to let me publish until I re quit out and restart my machine. So, all right, you know, publish. You know how to publish from last week if you, or, yeah, from last week. If you need to go back and rewatch that video, you might need to go back and rewatch that video, but that's pretty much how we publish. Um, so the only thing I had left to do would be now, you know, putting those breakpoints again. I'm going to need to redesign and re um, fix all of my pages, adding the breakpoints in, and fixing the design in each page as I go through, which I'm obviously not going to have time to do tonight. Um, and then I would publish my site. Oh, come on. There we go. 
and I didn't put together my thank you page, but basically what I would put on my thank you page, if you choose to do something like this, is normally I just put um, a little, um, like a little blurb that says something along the lines of, what my paragraph says? You know, thank you for contacting us. We will get back to you promptly or something like that. You know, just a little like, hey, thanks for contacting us. And that would all need to be redesigned too. All right, so we have um, about 15 minutes left. Are there any um, questions that anybody has that they would like me to go over before we end for tonight? Anything specific? Um, I have a couple of things, actually. Sure. <clears throat> um, so I was having trouble for some reason um, uploading photos or picture any kind of images. Um, so at one point I had like copied and pasted one of the ones that was already within the file. And I don't know if that's why, but it was, I was using it in my footer and it wasn't allowing me to stretch it to the browser. Is that because it's a pasted image or something? No, it might have just been, um, if the image isn't big enough, sometimes it won't let you stretch it to the browser with. It can get a little bit, it, it, it'll get a little bit weird. And were you manually trying to set, stretch it or were you trying to do stretch to browser with? I was trying to stretch it to browser. It's the same exact image I have in my header though. So it okay. should be bigger. Yeah, that should work. Yeah. Um, what I would say is, um, and you're saying it wasn't laying you place it. Oh no, I did actually, I'm sorry. No, I did. I did. No. You had it placed in your header, correct? And I was placed in my header, but I had to just copy it and paste it because for some reason when I went to go to the library to upload photos and I'd try to select something, all yeah. my JPEGs and everything were grayed out and it wouldn't let me select anything. I don't know what was going on. That could have been, that sounds like something that was going on with the Adobe server. I've had that happen to me before and it's like there, something was down with their Okay, because I thought, I was like, how do I forget how to do this? I swear yeah. this is how I do this, but anyways, okay. So hopefully that's what it was, but I don't know why it, it's what not letting me stretch it to the browser. Um, maybe it was this, it was the same time. So maybe it was just having issues. I don't know. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I it made an issue and I fixed it. Oh, the, it, the light box question? No, not the light box. Her question with oh. the, um, the picture not stretching. Yes. I had to click into it and make it bigger okay. than what it was. And then when, then it worked. Oh, okay. Like all the way, <laughs> click all the way into it. Okay, like click, 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 click. Where, oh, that was fun. Okay, Muse just decided to close itself up. <laughs> the power of the click. Wow, oh, yeah, I'm like, it's a, you're, we're talking about it, and it's like, nope. Oh, yeah, no, you did quit unexpectedly. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's fun. That was fun. I'm glad I saved. <laughs> I wonder how many designers go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I do at least, I'm not going to lie, probably at least once a day. <laughs> like, that's why when people are like, no, you don't understand. I'm like, oh, no, believe me. Oh. I understand. <laughs> I have been there. I have definitely, definitely been there. <laughs> My husband, would, sometimes I've sat in the room with him at night, and he's wanting to watch TV. And so I'm, like, working on something. He's like, you're not going to be over there, like, yelling at your computer, are you? I'm like, um, I might. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a chance that that is going to happen. My <laughs> husband's a designer, so he doesn't even question. Like, uh -huh. he's just like, oh, it did that again. And I'm like, yeah, it did. He's like, oh, that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's... it's <laughs> He gets it. He's, he's always, he's always, you know, he's like, wow, I would have been yelling louder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. 
Well, Jessica, thank you for that. I will keep clicking until I can get that to work and make it bigger until that. Yeah, happens. and there's, um, mm -hmm. I was telling somebody last night, I said, you know, if you guys have like little things, like questions that you're running into, like, hey, has anybody else run into this particular issue? I have no problem at all if you guys want to use like the discussion um, post for, for that, like to just kind of start a discussion going of like, you know, maybe like, um, problems and solutions that you've run into in Muse. Like, um, I know one of you, I don't remember who, I think it was you, um, Jenny, I, you were having a trouble, trouble with the pinning showing up, right? Yes, I was. I, I okay, because um, there was somebody last night who was having the same issue. So I had told her, I said, if you want to um, put something in the discussion, I'm like, I think it was Jenny who was having the same issue. And I couldn't see it on my end. So it's hard to troubleshoot things I can't see on my end. Oh, right. But I said, you know, that you might be able to go in and just say, hey, I ended up doing this and it worked. So if you guys want to use the discussion that way, I say, have at it that'd be awesome for everybody so work, you know, work around form <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i tell people that all the time i'm like you know what use the discussion post your post your links and say hey can somebody take a look at this and tell me if it looks right on your end because it looks right on my end but i've been looking at it for four days straight so <laughs> i always tell students that i'm like if you guys want to use the discussion for that seriously go right ahead um as far as um the using um your own icons in the light box widget let me see which some of them let you change things out and some of them don't so you're talking about um the slideshow light box um the one that had hold on let me move this yeah i think that's the one i was using for my portfolio that has the little thumbnails and click it gets bigger okay let me let me I'll, I'll take a look i haven't tried to do that so sometimes i kind of have to check out things on the fly and all right so not the thumbnails but the actual right and left buttons right okay um it's text yeah. Oh, so, huh. I'm. I was like, I was. Yeah, like, can you, you know, how, like in InDesign, you can tag, you can copy sometimes an image into text. Let's. Let me see. Let me see if I can. Um, I'm trying to think of what I might have open that I can open to try this out with. Um, like, let me try the Pinterest logo or something. <laughs> Oops. Let me select that. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. So um if you make it small enough, I just selected it, did a control X, and then I selected the um the you know the text in there and did a control V and it does paste it into the text box. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Hey, learning something new. <laughs> I'm like, I have not tried that, but let's let's give it a whirl because I know you can copy and paste images into text boxes in InDesign now, and, and Muse is um, built off of the InDesign platform. So, you know, sometimes things work the same way. Now, is there anything else that anybody wants me to take a look at before we end? The only thing I'm curious about um, as far as like web servers go, what's your experience with that? I mean, I don't know if you have something maybe you could share in the announcements or something um, as far as that goes or like, I'm legally not supposed to say, I recommend this. Oh, right. That's my disclaimer. I'm not saying I recommend this. I will say what I personally use and I haven't had a problem with <laughs> nice. is um, Bluehost. And honestly, um, my, my husband, like I said, he also does graphic design, web and illustration. So when we set up our website, our Pixel 8 website, he did all of the hosting 
for me and just like took care of that part of it just because like he was like researching like all right you know who has the best like what are the best deals and I was like I just want to do the design end and you can take care of that end of it so um he said that he found Bluehost easy to use and um we haven't like we've had a couple of times where it's like um the site might be down for like a day or so or we've had some like weird things going on with like the email that we run through the site but all in all we haven't had like um a bad experience with them and they're relatively well priced okay. um you know like they, everybody's like oh but GoDaddy's the cheapest and it, they kind of are but once you have to add in all of the things you're probably gonna need you end up spending the same money and so I just you know Bluehost it was just like it's this you know, price for what you want. So right. I, we host and do our Pixel 8 site actually through WordPress. Um, so I can't, I would be lying if I said how he knew, I knew, if I knew he, how he set that up. Um, right. I just don't usually take care of that. And whenever I do stuff through Muse, it's like, I just do the publish button. And then the same thing, um, I know how to set it up and send it to a free server on Dreamweaver, which is what I usually show when I teach a Dreamweaver site. And then, you know, class, and it's just like, I've kind of, because I just don't usually do the hosting. I just have him do it. <laughs> I know that that, but it's like, you know, it's like, we just kind of divvy up the, you know, what we do. And so right. it ended up being that way. And it's one of those things where I, I actually said to him last week, I'm like, I need to sit down with you and figure out our hosting because if I'm going to start doing some sites on the side, I'm like, I, I shouldn't have to wait for you to come home and be like, Hey, can you take care of that for me? So I'll just, I'll just send my new site to your husband. And he yeah, said, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, can you take care of this? I heard you were agreed at that. I've, I've heard great yeah, things so about it, you. It, but um I've been using eHost. Oh, okay. Okay. I have not like I don't have it. The Bluehost is the only one I've really had experience with. And I've had experience with GoDaddy at a job I had. They just used GoDaddy. Um, so I kind of had some experience with them over there. Um but again, you know, I I find like, you know, do do a little bit of research and just you know, figure out like, all right, what do I actually need? Because there's no need to pay for anything more than you need. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it for the restaurant for my husband's restaurant. Okay. You know. Yeah. So. so I probably wouldn't do anything free because there's a good chance that they're going to throw oh, no. all these ads all over your website and you definitely don't want that. Right. I mean, you know, a, um, Adobe, um, you know, Business Catalyst does take care of things. I will say this, if you are going through something else other than the Adobe Business Catalyst, you won't be able to publish it like through the publish button. You'll actually have to export your entire site as HTML and send those files up. That much I do know. Right. Um, okay. To the web server, whatever web server that you end up using. Okay. You might even be able to like kind of go through like the FTP host or something. That's what like that. I use. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was going to say, there's a lot of um, tutorials that walk you right through doing all of that online. I'll send, I'll send Jessica a message. Jessica will help me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all need to like stay in touch with each other i i have like i've i've, I've taught a couple of classes where there's been like a, the same group all along and they're like oh we have like a facebook group and we like <laughs> all the time and we like help each other out and i'm like that's so awesome i'm like the, and they're all over the country and they were like yeah but when we graduate we plan on getting together like you know nice. somewhere central in the u.s and like having a meetup i'm like that's awesome that's cool. Yeah, so I was like, that's so cool that you guys are going to do that. I'm like, I love hearing stories like that. <laughs> um, now, any any other questions? I think I'm good. All right. I think that's it. All right. Well, you guys have done great. Th like, I've seen some great, great work um, this, this mod. So, uh, you know, definitely keep it up going into the end of this week. Like, I'm super excited to see all of your finished sites. I love... Um,
teaching the web classes because I love seeing everybody's sites. So I'm like, hey, whenever I get like a Muse class or even like the Dreamweaver class, which is way more, you know, in depth on my end teaching. <laughs> but, um, but I always love when I see people's like sites and like everything's working and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, just keep at it with those break points. Like I said, like really, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the scrubber, not just where the break points are and making sure things aren't falling apart. And, you know, just make sure you kind of give yourself enough time to, to do that this week. And I think everybody should be good. Yay. Yay. Um, and all right, I'm just going to end the recording, but I will be available in case if anybody had a question that they might not have wanted to ask while I was recording. So I'm just going to stop the recording now and I will be in the, I'll still be able to talk.